Hey there team, how are you, how are you? It's another snowy day here in the Twin Tiers. Big surprise, big surprise, right? Um, and uh, so last week, earlier in the week, at some point, time is irrelevant, I uh, took a poll to see what you thought uh, would be fun for me to paint today. And hands down, people said flowers. And there were some comments about uh, flowers in the snow or flowers coming up from the snow. Um, so who knows, maybe I'll work that in. I might not, we'll see. Uh, but what I settled on was um, a painting of tulips. So I did sort of a painty sketch earlier in the week so I could kind of um, get my thoughts down before I met with all of you. So paint along with me or draw along with me or if you've got crayons, if you've got markers, you've got colored pencils, just make it all happen. Uh, hey, Carrie, hey, Veronica, JD, nice to see ya. Um, so whatever it is, if it's a ballpoint pen in the back of an envelope, grab it and draw along with me. Uh, this is gonna be a fun, easy painting today. And I'm gonna give you some advice about how to get reference photos, uh, legally use reference photos, because we wanna make sure we're always giving artists their due, right? Um, this uh, painting here actually came from a, um, a little, a tiny little photo that I saw in a new magazine that I just got called, stick with me, it's called Flowers. I think it's, it's not Better Homes and Gardens, it's that other one. But anyway, they have a, an edition called Flowers and I could not make this up as I was sitting down and getting my paint supplies together to make this. The mail lady came, the dog went crazy, and uh, flowers showed up in my mailbox. So that's what we're going to work on today. So I'm going to take a moment, I'm going to flip my camera around, and we're going to get going. So stick with me, friends, stick with me. Oh, and if we get cut off, you know the drill. Just hang out stay stay with me uh i will do start another live if the robots are unhappy today so here we go i'm shifting around so you can see my painting surface i've got a chai tea with me today uh that's what i'm sipping on so this is our sample um and i'm going to be working on an eight by ten canvas uh, which is smaller than my sample, so I'm going to have to be mindful of that when I'm putting together my design. Let me just get myself organized. I am a bit disorganized today. I was supposed to go work on a really cool mural today, and I thought it, the snow was coming, so I postponed working on it. So all of my art supplies were packed up, were ready to go, and I uh, didn't get to actually go to the mural. So here we are. So this is basically the sample image that we're gonna use for today. Uh, I am using a website called Unsplash, U-N Splash, unsplash.com, and you can go there for free. You don't have to pay anything. You can type in just about anything you want a reference of, and there are free copyright free images that you can then use. So uh, just in case you didn't know, uh, if I were to paint something that didn't have a free copyright, I couldn't legally show it to all of you here on Facebag. And um, fine print, I couldn't make an exact duplicate painting and then call it my own. So by using Unsplash, uh, unsplash.com, and there are other sites like this, um, I can use this reference photo, I can tell you about it, I can show it to you, and if I were the type of person who painted exactly what I saw, I could also legally then sell my painting. But I just wanna make sure I am giving Jonathan Larson uh, a shout out. He uh, produced this photograph and it's what I'm going to be using as my reference photo today. Again, my original reference came from my Flowers magazine. It was a teeny tiny little picture and I was just struck by, I like the variegated tulips and I specifically am tr trying to work on some tulips that aren't open yet because 
we are pre-spring, right? <laughs> spring is coming, folks. So I like the idea of thinking about the tulips not even being open yet because we're not in spring yet. We are pre-spring. So let's get rolling on that. So I've got that off camera. I can see it if I need to reference it again. Here is uh, the sample from uh, earlier in the week. And I like this because this is an easy peasy flower for all of you to draw. I know you can do it. I know you can do it. Um, and I also used a limited color palette. So I used, there's actually three different shades, three different hues in here um, of paint. I've got a purple, a pink, and a red. And then I used yellow and green in the background. So I'm using more of a limited palette and I'm gonna do that on uh, our page today again. I might do, maybe I'll do oranges, yellow, red or something. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, it's a very easy shape. Um, this white that's in here is not white paint. It's just the white of the paper. This is that Canson paper that I've told you I like. Um, so I'm going to grab my favorite dead Sharpie, you know, that Sharpie that has sort of dried out. And if I weren't doing this, uh, on camera, I would use a pencil. In fact, I used the pencil on here. You can't see it. It's great. And I'm going to think about, um, a cluster of tulips. And here's another thing I'd like to kind of think about. One of the things I love about this photograph is the depth of field, meaning that the camera got some of these tulips very sharp in focus, and then some of the, a, a lot of these tulips completely out of focus. I once was able to pull that off on um, a painting of some sunflowers. It was a really famous, popular painting for me. People love it. People buy it from my Redbubble shop on t-shirts and stickers and things. I think I'm going to try to play with that again here. We'll see how it goes. Um, so my this shape is so easy. So it's a triangle and it's got some rounded hips. Think of it like a hippie triangle. Kind of like the shape I get if I, uh, if I don't exercise enough. <laughs> so there, I'm hoping you can see that. So there's my first one. I am not worried too much at this stage if it's the exact right shape. Um, you could also look at it as sort of like a gumdrop or a heart that doesn't have sort of the, the, the inner curve happening. Um, let's see. I want these to be pretty clustered and maybe one or two of them overlapping. We'll see. Now that one feels a little bit smaller, too small for me. So I will just round it out a little more. Maybe I'll put one over here. I don't know. Do you have tulips in your garden? Um, I have a couple, but not as many as I would like. A number of years ago, my hubby and I um, went to Amsterdam. Uh, I, I love the, um, the art history that has taken place in Amsterdam. So we wanted to go and see all the museums and uh, ride a bike in Amsterdam is so great. And as you know, they are known for their tulips. So uh, we went to the Tulip Museum. Oh my gosh, it was so great. Uh, and then of course you always leave a museum by going through the gift shop, which come on, we all are excited about the gift shop. Uh, uh, so you leave via the gift shop and they have, I, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of varieties of tulips, tulip bulbs that you could buy. And then, you know, all different kinds of tulip tchotchkes as well. Um, uh, and then they had this table off on the side that's like, if you're flying to America, the, here are the tulips you can bring back because, you know, you can't cross, uh, you can't cross pollinate different plants or fruits uh, from country to country. So uh, we could only pick like from three varieties. And so I, I bought a few of these beautiful red tulip bulbs, well, potentially red tulip bulbs. I planted them, in a, planted them in our garden and I'd say from like the 10 that I planted, I got two. Uh, I was happy with those two, but 10 would have been nicer too. All right, so I have just a bunch of tulips that are probably going to live right about there. Um, and then I'm gonna put in stalks eventually. I might, you know what? 
I'm just looking at this, I might drop another one in here. I'm giving them varied sizes so that it looks like some of them are a little bit further away. So they would get smaller as they go away from you, right? Um, and maybe one here. I could do this all day. Just the just rounded triangles. And as I paint them, I'll make them a little bit more pointy than this drawing. And again, I think I'm gonna start with an uh, sort of an orange color. Um, a neon one, why surely that sounds like a good idea. So let's make sure everyone is seeing everything. Awesome sauce. I'm gonna move this sample out of the way. Uh, and I am just gonna start, I've got a little bit of water on my brush. I've got this neon orange. And you know, you've been here before. I like LOL, lots of layers. So this orange may not uh, stay this orange. It may, something else may happen. But what I did forget to do, which I wanted to do, is I wanted to leave like that split again so that it looks like the petals are sort of overlapping. So I will do that on this next few. So I'm just, leaving the canvas for now. I'm almost treating this like it's watercolor, but I'm using acrylic paints today. Um, in traditional watercolor, most of the time you don't use white. So you could use something uh, that marks the surface so that you can't uh, get any paint on it if you're painting in watercolor. Um, some, like or a white crayon or something or a wax or uh, uh, what are they calling it? It is a fluid, like a, a gapping fluid you could use. Um, but in acrylics, you just don't paint where you don't want to paint. I could put more, I could put white in there later if I want to. All right, so that seems like enough of that sort of orangey red color. I'm gonna move over to pink. So I'm thinking about analogous colors. Analogous colors are colors that sit near each other on the color wheel. So red, orange, yellow are analogous to each other. Yellow, green, and um, tealy blue, turquoise are analogous. They sit next to each other. Um, so I'm sort of thinking of analogous colors here, and really I'm just picking up colors that make me happy. And look at how nicely that goes with my shirt. Boop, 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 boop. So I don't have, so this house that we moved into last year, I was so lucky and blessed that it, it's almost like I bought a, a garden with a house in the middle of it. Um, I've been getting to explore all of the things that are coming up in the garden. I am so grateful to the owners before us who made a beautiful garden at this house. So there aren't a ton of tulips that have been planted and I will be adding to the garden every year as we go. Um, but last year there weren't a ton of tulips. So I'm going to dip a little bit into this purple to just change up. I haven't washed my brush yet. I'm just letting these colors mix as they will. I know for some people that's like a heart stopper. Like not cleaning your brush. What do you mean? It's okay. And I'm using the cat tongue shaped brush. Uh, one of my favorite Trakel brushes. I just applied to be um, a Trakel spotlight artist. That would be so nice. I would like that. I would feel proud of that to be a spotlight artist with Trakel. But e e anyway, either way, I'm gonna keep, keep buying their brushes because I really like them. And I always use synthetic brushes because I don't like to use anything with animal products in it. I just feel like I don't need somebody's whiskers or tail or booty hair to be plucked out just so I can make a painting. I am happy using synthetic um, bristles here. All right, so they just look like little gumdrops. Maybe we'll call them gumdrop tulips. And you see, I'm just skipping out on some of the area for now. Um, I will use some more shading to uh, maybe make this white area a little bit smaller, but all right. 
And then, like I said, I wanted to make it look like there were more that were out of focus. So in this background here, I'm going to give myself something that's not as vibrant a color, and I'm gonna just put some dabs in there. So let me see if I can lighten that up a little bit. Lighten it up, we are on camera, that is great. I'm gonna lighten this up a little, and I'm just gonna sort of mimic that shape in the background, and I, we want these to be out of focus, so I'm not gonna give them a hard edge. And change the color up just a little bit. Again, I want these to be more dull than they are in the foreground here. And it's just the impression of additional tulips in the background. Uh, it's the impression of these tulips, not uh, realistically painted, perfectly rendered tulips. So let's go a little bit purpley. Again, you don't want these to be as bright because naturally, in perspective, things don't look quite as bright as you uh, move as they move away from you. Uh, atmospheric perspective changes how you're perceiving the color. Of course, the color doesn't actually change. Um, it's just our perceptions of the color because of the atmosphere. It's sort of like if you look at a mountain range, the mountains closer to you look a lot different in color than they do further away. Yellow the the yellow spectrum of color sort of uh, fades out and you don't see it quite as much. Color theory, you thought you were just here to look at tulips, but we're gonna talk some color theory. All right, so now I'm grabbing a larger brush. I'm grabbing some green paint and lots of water and boop ba da boo just throwing that down. I'm not being too careful uh, because it's gonna get the it's gonna get um, the tulip stems on top and some other stuff and who knows what I'm gonna come up with. As usual, I paint the edges because I'm imagining somebody buys this painting and they don't want to have to frame it. They can just throw it up on the wall and uh be just enjoying their art even before they go to the framers but if they did want to frame it they could they still could they would nothing stopping them but because i'm painting the edges um it allows uh whoever buys the painting to just again throw it up on their wall so i'm doing that negative shape painting that we've talked about before which is basically just going around your artwork so if you are feeling like um, your painting style is a little too tight and you wanna loosen up, some of my suggestions to you would be is uh, get a larger brush, put those little bitty brushes away and use more water or something, something that will uh, loosen up your paint if your paints are heavy bodied and they're very thick. Um, you, there, let's see, are these dry? Um, you could also use your non-dominant hand if you wanna loosen up. Um, you can restrict yourself to making short choppy strokes, so no, no tight little detailed strokes. You could also hold your paintbrush further back on, your, on the handle, so get further away from it. And you also could buy brushes that are a bit longer. I have a couple long brushes in the studio, but I sort of like this middle to short brush. Um, I uh, pay special attention to how, how heavy a brush is. I feel like sometimes those long handled brushes can be quite heavy. And you know, it's not a big deal if you're just holding it for a couple of minutes, but you know, you spend a couple of hours a day holding a brush and it might um, tire you out or give you like a a hand cramp or something. So I like a lighter brush. I don't want a real heavy, real heavy brush. All right, so how are we looking? All right, I think so, I, I'm liking what I'm seeing back here with those sort of um, in, the, in the distance, 
sort of flowers. And now I'm gonna go a little deeper green down here because like I said, we, as we, as things get closer to us, the color, uh, the atmospheric color changes. So I'm just making myself a deeper green using my bright green here and my favorite Payne's gray. Payne's gray, which is a, like a, a very cool blue. Uh, it's vi so versatile. And look at these stripes, these swipes I'm doing with the paintbrush. Um, they already sort of look like leaves. So that's pretty cool. I don't need to do a whole lot. I'm just de deciding on the direction I'm going in, keeping them all sort of in one direction. Um, all right, I'm gonna let that dry down a bit. I'm gonna wipe my brush off on something else. Let's see. Let's see. We've been using this one for a few weeks. Uh, these flowers that are coming out, I think they're quite cute. And for any of you who visited on Friday, we had a special edition pep club on Friday at seven uh, in conjunction with uh, Brick City Rescue, uh, Dog Rescue in New Jersey. I'm painting one of their adoptable pets. This is Winky. She's a, she's a lady dog who needs a home. So get in touch with Brick City Rescue. If you're interested in having a dog on your couch who's gonna love you, and whoever adopts Winky, I'm, I'm donating that painting to Winky's new family. Okay, so now I wanna get a few stems in here. This is one of those situations where, you, friends, I don't want you to think about it too much. I want you to um, make a mark and move on. If you think too much about these stems, you'll drive yourself nuts. And so we have, what do we have? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have 10 ish um, tulips. Am I going to show 10 stems? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, so I've got my sort of wider brush here again from Trickel. I've got paint just on the edge. I'm holding the brush up like this and making a mark. It's fun to make the sound. And I'm just sort of imagining where these stems might be. I'm not thinking right now about whether or not there's a light side and a dark side. You know, typically I like to get my shadow area and my highlight area sort of set in the beginning, but I'm imagining this is just one big bright day where there the it's or it's a bit overcast, which is lovely lighting. And I, in fact, I think on our sample here, this looks like um a, a bright day, but an overcast day because there's no hard shadows anywhere. It's not like half of the tulip bowl, uh, flower is real bright and half is in shadow. So I'm kind of thinking the same thing, but I'm, so I'm not worried too much about light and shadow on this one. And, and there. And you see, I'm mixing up the greens a bit just to give it a little bit more interest. And you know what? I think we need a little bit of green in here, just around that tulip, a little bit right there. Using her fingers and wiping it on her clothes. Okay. Um, like I said, I was about to go out to work on a mural today and then I was just, I was walking the pup and it just looked like the, the whole get snow was gonna start and sadly or, or happily it didn't start but i should have just gone and worked on that mural today but i'm all dressed to go work on a mural so i can wipe paint on my clothes today all right pretty good pretty good so i am just gonna i'm gonna grab i just said don't use small brushes but here she goes grabbing a smaller brush than what i have just so I can fill in a little bit of the green in this background area. And I could have put the green down first, but I really wanted these tulips to be bright and puppy. Uh, bright and puppy. So I am mixing up different greens and just moving them around, putting them in here in the background. 
looking cute. Okay, so I am gonna put my brushes down. I'm gonna pick up the tulip brush that I was using, the cat tongue one, and I'm just gonna do some shading in here just to give the each bulb a little bit more interest. Let's see. Ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> okay, so here is some color theory. So orange and purple. Purple is the complement to yellow. On the color wheel, uh, on one side of the color wheel, you have yellow. On the opposite side, you have orange. And they are great because when they're dry, they make each other very uh, contrasty and bright and happy. When you mix complementary colors that are wet, you get mud. So I have purple. Purple is made of uh, red and blue. Um, purple's complementary is, is yellow, as I said. And I have orange. Orange is made of red and yellow. Because there's a lot of yellow in orange, I have to be careful when I'm mixing it with purple because... 50% of that orange is yellow. And if I don't want to dull down my colors, I don't want wet yellow to incorporate with wet purple. Uh, if I do want to dull down my colors, then by all means, go for it. So just be mindful that, uh, j just because orange and purple aren't complementary, they still affect each other um, quite a bit when you're mixing them on a wet surface. So I am just sort of making sure these tulips in front have a nice clean edge because that's really going to highlight the contrast of the depth of field. So if these are very sharp edged and these in the background are very loosey goosey, you're going to get more of that effect of uh, depth of field of of these flowers being front and center and closer to you and the others further away. So my art degree is actually in fine art photography. Um, so thinking about depth of field is very much of a photographer's game thinking about um, how you get a lens to behave how you want. You ever uh, take a picture of a group and then somebody's in focus, somebody's out of focus. Um, that's because the depth of field, what the lens was able to keep sharp and in focus um, wasn't correct for whatever your subject was. Look, you thought you were coming here just for painting, but here I am talking to you about dogs, talking to you about uh photography it's like a it's like a like a, a multi multi-stop shop here right or one-stop shop i guess is the right way to say it so i'm picking up i uh some more of this bright orange and again i can see my sketch lines coming through the paint and i like it that's my lol my lots of layers I am not worried at all about that. I'm gonna turn this upside down so I'm a little closer. Try not to get my head in the camera. Let's see. So I have family down in New Orleans and uh, my brother actually had pipes that froze. That's how cold it got down in New Orleans. So. You know, he, he's always heard me talking about talking about the times I've had frozen pipes. So you can imagine what a shock it must be to those folks in the South to get some frozen pipes. So we got to think good thoughts. There are millions of people without any heat right now who aren't used to it. You know, here in, in, uh, in the Twin Tiers, you know, we, we're used to having generators and, you know, fireplaces and you know, what, whatever else we need. We have heavy coats and boots and stuff, but our friends in the South aren't quite as prepared. So let's think some good thoughts for them. And again, I'm trying to get these edges to be really crisp so that 
Um, it's a real contrast between what's going on way back in the background and what we are pretending is in the foreground. So I, looking around my studio, I realized I hadn't really painted a ton of tulips before. I've got one or two that are kind of sticking in a bouquet somewhere, but uh, in a painting, but I haven't really done straight up uh, tulips. So this is fun for me. I'm just sort of experimenting and and you know each time I'll I'll improve upon my technique. I'll make some different decisions. Um, so I'm I'm really grateful for all of you being here. I have been loving these sessions. It keeps me motivated to try new things. That if you've taken any of my classes, I want to bring new things so that. Um, you're as as I learn new things you you can learn new things and we can all benefit from my experiment oh my gosh and thank you thank you thank you to my patreon supporters my heart sings and I am just about to send out so at the at the ten dollar a month pledge level. Um, I send out some sort of mystery art every month in the mail, like snail mail. You actually have to like go to your post box. Uh, and I send something to my $10 a month uh, supporters. So I'm just about to put something in the mail for them. I'm so excited. I hope they love it. Um, and then I've got uh, two other levels at the $2 a month level. I'll give you a shout out. Um, to whatever it is you're working on. So maybe you're a realtor like our friends JD and Melissa, or maybe you're running a daycare, or maybe you're running a film studio, studio like our, our friend Rich. Um, so I am just so grateful. I'm feeling like I need something else going on here. You know, you know what how it is with me. I get to a point where things are a little too wet and I have to start um, backing off because when things are just too wet, you just gotta let them dry down. So I'm using acrylic paint here, which is really just plastic polymer and some, and some pigment uh, and it dries relatively quickly. Um, but you st I still need things to dry enough so that I can keep working. So I just added some red here. So still, I feel like it, I'm still working pretty uh, limited palette because I'm using these analogous colors. And I'm just kind of thinking, you know what parrot tulips look like? They kind of have these wispy bits so i was just kind of thinking of that all right and i'm feeling like i need a little zhuzh that's the official art term a little zhuzh here just so that they really pop a little more maybe i'll add some yellow to the the greenery uh and then you should be yelling at home you just said you're using a limited palette I know, I know. But, you know, I'm making this up on the fly. So I say one thing, then I do something a little different. We know what to expect. We've been here for quite a few weeks. So I need to pour out some more yellow. So I'm using my golden fluid acrylics. If I can open it. Don't use your teeth. Don't use your teeth. Ah! Banging on the table. Yay, that worked. So I was a jerk and I let the little cap get, get all gunked up. Don't do that. Look, you've just learned another lesson. Oh, and, and another tip. I have a little plastic bag taped to the side of my table so that I can always throw away those little like paint boogers uh, e in an easy peasy way. Um, all right, so I am just now negative shape painting around these stems just because I want them to 
be highlighted a little bit more. And I'm keeping the yellow out of the background because in atmospheric perspective, the yellow wavelengths don't travel um, as far as the other colors. So like, like I was saying before, if you look at a mountain range, uh, the, you'll see uh, that the color doesn't look as yellow. Um, it may be subtle, but it's one of these things that once you see it, there is no unseeing it. So again, these, these are simple, uh, folk art inspired, got a little bit of impressionism going on today, paintings, but I still want you to get some like bang for your buck for uh, some real art knowledge going on here. All right, so now I need that yellow to draw, dry down a bit so that um, I can do some more stuff. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some heavier green so that I can get, if we look at my sample again, We I can get some leaves uh, that look a little bit more substantial. But I can't do it just yet. So I'm just gonna go around here. And I think I might pick up some white. Like I was leaving the white of the I was using keeping the white of the um, the the canvas as my white, but I'm just gonna rinse off a brush, wipe it on my clothes because I'm wearing my mural clothes, and I'm gonna throw some white in here just to uh, break it up a little. Make it look a little rounder. I can't be the only one who sings while they create. So I teach elementary school two days a week. And um, when the little kids are humming while they're working, oh my gosh, it is so sweet. Like, you know, we're social distancing and we're all wearing masks. And, you know, so I can't, I want to hug them, but I don't. But they're just, it's so cute when the little kiddos start humming. Oh my God. Uh, so remember, get some perspective on your artwork. Hold it away from you. So I'm just holding it an arm's length away to kind of get a look at what's going on. Squinting really helps too. Uh, squinting helps you to see if your values are all in check. So you should have um, uh, very darks, medium darks, lights, very lights, the whole gamut. You should, your values should, um, your should be varied in your in your artwork that helps you to have more depth and more interest and i've heard some paint teachers painting teachers say that value is more important than color and i'm like say what but they they got something there because if everything is all one flat tone um you don't have a lot of depth you don't have a lot of excitement so you know, there's something to be said for that. Um, let's see, did this dry down? It is, we're gonna call it dry enough. So let's see, where can I pick up some green? I'm gonna, again, mix in my Payne's Gray with my green to get a deeper green. Uh, and let's see if I can just get some leafy shapes in here. Oh my gosh, that's looking all right. That's looking all right. Woohoo. Let's see. And maybe just on the edges a little bit to give it like a little bit of a vignette. A vignette is a, another like photography term. Um, where you just darken the corners so that the lightest bit is in the middle and it draws your eye up yonder. And I'll just darken these corners just a little bit. It's really subtle. It's sort of a dry brush technique. There's not much paint on my brush and um, I'm just hitting the corners just to darken it up so that it's going to bring the eye closer in to the center where all the art color is happening. So again, I want the 
shapes in the foreground to be sharper. So I'm just doing some negative shape painting around them with my green so that they just look um, more in focus. And then the stuff in the background can fall out of focus and be wacky and wonky and all right, I feel like, boop, I feel like I need one more, like, there, yeah, cool. All right, that was a quick one, right? Was that quick? What do you think? Again, you know me, I'm probably going to keep working on it. Um, that's generally what I do. Uh, for last week, we worked on uh, kitty cats for Galentine's Day, and I'm still working on it. I've given them some more expressive eyes. I've changed the background up, if you remember. Uh, this background was all this light pink with the, the dots on it. So I keep working. Um, I, I generally don't finish any painting in one sitting. So like people who order custom paintings... Um, it may look like I paint very quickly, but it could take me six hours or some amount of time over a couple of weeks before I really feel like it's a done piece. So keep checking back because I'm going to keep working on this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> so thank you so much for hanging out at Pet Club. Be sure to check out uh, everything that's going on at Hidden Landmarks TV. JD goes live uh, with local history every Friday at nine and we're going to have a garden show coming up and we have some other things in the works. So fun. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out. Thanks for painting um, a field of tulips with me. And uh, again, ch keep checking back because I will uh, keep working on it. Um, we haven't glazed anything together. So maybe, maybe that's one of the things we'll do next week is we'll glaze something that's almost done that's a that's a fun process and there's some stuff to know so i'd love you to know some stuff thank you for being here again thank you to my patreons patreon.com uh, slash philomena jack studio thanks for hanging out thanks for the comments and the love again i honestly from the bottom of my painty heart it means so much to me um i will see you next thursday